low plus. Okay, so the next couple lectures we're going to talk about are in the uh, like the flow of heat. So we know that heat can travel from one place to another, and there's three ways that it uh, does that. Um, we have convection, conduction, and radiation. Now, uh, so we're going to have the three separate topics. Now, this is going to be the shortest one out of those. We're going to talk about conduction in this uh, video. This one's kind of short because, in a sense, it's a very complicated thing. And we're just going to go over the basic idea behind it. So there'll be other lectures on conduction and then radiation. But they all cover the general category of just the flow of heat. So even though we're just talking about conduction, I kind of want to go over all three methods, but we'll focus on conduction then. All right, so, uh, or we'll focus on convection. So convection is the transfer of heat from one place to another by the bulk uh, movement of a, typically we're talking about fluid, so like air, water, things like that. Now, uh, what that means like a bulk movement of material from one place to another, think like uh, wind. You can have, uh, that has a huge effect on weather. You can have, uh, like, we had a polar vortex a few years ago, where you've got these winds that circle around the Arctic and they just dip down. So we've got this cold wind from the Arctic actually coming down and uh, that's bringing that cold with it. You can have hot winds coming from regions that bring heat with it. And um, yes, yeah, so there's something actually physically moving, something on a large scale that's physically moving from one place to another. So to contrast that with conduction, let's say just an example of conduction. Say we have a metal bar and we light a fire under one end. So we have a flame here. So again, we're applying heat to this end, but if you're holding this end, it won't take too long before you notice. Heat's gonna flow from one end to the other. And so in conduction, say this metal bar is just here. It's not moving anywhere, but the heat is flowing through the bar. Now in some sense, that could be done by an actual things moving from one end to the other, um, on a microscopic level, but mainly it's um, it's just energy flowing from one end to the other. But convection current, so like the bar itself is not moving, but the heat is flowing through it. In convection, just think of like water or air is actually moving things from one place to another. And then radiation, we'll talk about that later, that's just everything is giving off radiation, like energy in the form of radiation. So, uh, but mainly I just want to talk about the difference between convection and conduction. So, uh, yeah, convection, you can't really see things like wind currents, you can't really see, but it is like actual mass moving from one place to another. Okay, now the thing is, we don't do too much with it because it's actually very complicated. Uh, describing fluid flows is extremely complicated. I mentioned that portal, uh, sorry, polar vortex a little while ago. And I remember when that happened, they were talking about it, and then I read something about it, where, like, why did that happen? So again, you've got, like, the, say this is the North Pole, here's the equator, so we're looking down, and you've got these really cold winds that circle around here, and then they just like dip down. Okay, that's an exaggeration, then they go nearly to the equator. But like these winds dip down. And the question like, why did that happen? And that's an extremely complicated thing. Um, it could have been something that happened like thousands of years ago that just kept building up until then just recently it caused this polar vortex to happen. So again, it's, uh, Describing the flow of a fluid in the real world is extremely difficult. Uh, there's people who are into that line of work. Uh, you need to know computers, have like supercomputers figuring this stuff out. 
So people involved in like weather forecasting know about this stuff. Yeah, it really requires um, very powerful computers. So we just focus on the basic, a uh, couple of basic ideas here. Uh, what is the idea? Let's look at, say we have a pot of water. So we have a pot that's filled with water. And uh, say we apply heat. So we have a burner underneath that's applying heat. We have a nice Bunsen burner here. And so what's happening is the water is heating up. And what happens when you heat things? They expand. And if they expand, they become less dense. So you've got this warm water on the bottom that's less dense than cold water. So you've got this warm water rising. And then when it gets to the top, it cools off a bit, and it's being pushed up by this rising water, and then it cools off, and it's going to sink down. And we get these convection cells. That, uh, where you've got the water rises, and then it kind of gets pushed aside by this uh, warmer water. So like once it gets to the top, say it cools down by now, like being pushed aside, and then it sinks down. And again, when this water rises, that leaves this gap, which is filled in by this water. So it forms these kind of circular cells. Uh, these are called convection cells. And a uh, very common thing. Um, I'm going to post a picture online. I don't have one now. But in the module about convection, uh, you can see these on the sun, too. They recently took a very very accurate picture of the sun where you can see convection cells. And these convection cells on the sun are about the size of Texas. They're very, very large. But yeah, so again, that happens in water, for example. Uh, there's another example in the notes. I'm gonna draw, let's say we have a coast. Here, so we've got water, and then we need to get a blue marker, but, okay, so this is water. And say it's daytime, and so there's white shining down all day, and we're absorbing all this energy from the sunlight. I remember we talked about uh, the three ways that energy can flow or heat can flow from one place to another. Uh, convection, conduction, radiation. This would be an example of radiation. The light from the sun is bringing energy. And what's going to happen when the energy hits like the water in the land, the water is going to remain cooler. So it's heating things up, but the water, remember water is a very high heat capacity. All right, so water has a very high heat capacity. The land has a much lower heat capacity. And so, uh, the, like say it's morning time, and you know, everything's roughly the same temperature, but then the sun comes up and starts warming things up. The land is going to heat up much faster, and so the air above the land is going to heat up as well. And so it's going to rise. And uh, then we're going to get these convection cells that kind of look like this. Because we have cooler air over the water. So when this air rises, water is going to flow in, or air is going to flow in from uh, over the water. Because that's colder. And so we're going to get convection cells that look like this. So we'll, uh, this has very important effects on... The weather. If you live next to a large body of water, like a lake, like Michigan, for example, although we're not that close to it, or if you live near the ocean, and so you know, all day long, we've got this cooler water from, uh, or cooler air from the water coming in and kind of moderating this temperature, keeping things cooler, and then at nighttime, the sunlight is gone, and so things start cooling off. 
And again, same reason, the high heat capacity, the water is going to remain warmer uh, for much longer because it, um, it takes a lot of energy. The heat capacity works both ways. Uh, the temperature change is going to be very slow because water has a high heat capacity. So at night, the water is going to remain somewhat warmer, and it's going to be giving off heat, which will keep the, uh, the area on the shore from cooling off too much. Where if you go to, like, for example, a desert, uh, it gets cold at night. So it's very hot in the daytime, but at night, it can lose heat very rapidly because there's no water around to, uh, like, trap that heat. And... Um, yeah, here this is more of the heat flowing. So this will greatly moderate uh, the area around like bodies of water. So it keeps things from heating up too much in the daytime and from cooling off too quickly at night. Okay, and again, uh, convection overall is an extremely difficult topic to deal with. Uh, fluid flows are very complicated and chaotic. Uh, they're very, um, mathematically, we're not going to get into that at all. That would be, uh, we wouldn't do that in a calculus-based class either. It's just a little too much. Uh, you can talk a little bit about fluid flows, like in Chapter 11 in the book, something called Bernoulli's Principle. But again, we kind of skipped that chapter. So there's not too much to say about con uh, convection. Just know the basic idea. That, you know, what it is, it's a flow of energy uh, due to, like, actually being carried from one place to another. And no amount of convection cells. Like, warm air rises, and then it cools off, and it gets pushed out of the way, and it sinks, and, you know, it can form this kind of circular motion for uh, these convection cells. Now, one thing that's actually kind of interesting, I'll say one more thing about... Uh, Convection, just because it's interesting and also important. Uh, now, this is going to be a horrible picture, but uh, this is North America. Here's South America. Uh, here's Europe. And then Africa. Okay, that's why I'm in science and not art. This is the best I can do as far as drawing. So North America... South America, like say, here's the equator. I think I drew it a little too high, but close enough. Europe and Africa. All right. So obviously, uh, the equator, tropical, very warm. We have this very important convection current in water, where we've got warm water from the equator flowing north. And this is bringing all this energy from the equator. The water is warm, and then when it moves up north, it's giving off this heat because it's in a colder environment. And this has a very large effect in monitoring the temperatures of North America and Europe. Now, the problem is, because the planet is warming, we have Greenland up here, which is filled with ice. And that ice is melting and dumping all this water uh, into the North Atlantic. And so again, this is a convection current here. Basically, the water from the equator rises, and then when it cools off, it sinks. So it go underwater. It actually forms these convection cell like this. But now because we're dumping all this cold water here, and again, this is fresh water, where the ocean is salt water, and so this is affecting the density of the ocean. And they're worried that this can affect this convection cell that's bringing up all this warm air from the equator. And so it's possible, like, global warming can cause the ice to melt, which is going to disrupt this so it will maybe not reach as far north. And so global warming could actually cause a mini ice age in Europe. Something like that is possible where it could slow down this convection current. And so this energy wouldn't be brought up at north, so it would like actually cool these northern latitudes and keep the region near the equator warmer, because this flow of energy 
it's taking energy away from the tropics. So it's kind of cooling off the tropics while warming Europe and, to a lesser extent, North America. But if that convection current is disturbed, uh, well, that could uh, cause significant impacts on the weather, which would probably not be good for Europe. It could get very cold there. And so, again, there, this is something very important that uh, we still don't fully understand. But uh, so far, it hasn't, nothing really significant has happened, but that's something they're watching out for. Okay. But again, um, we're going to focus just on the basic things. I mean, the people who do this for a living don't fully understand it, so we're not going to get too detailed into convection. All right, so that's actually going to be it for this one. A very short topic. Um, yeah, just know the kind of basic concepts.